guys, welcome to another episode of the A3 Review. As you can see, we have a lot of stuff in front of us. What do we got, Boris? That's right. We've got, well, we've got Hasbro Sport Max. But yes. what's important is all the little guys that are on top. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of the third-party uh, Legends scale uh, figures today. Uh, and uh, some of them you might know about. Some of them are a little bit new to the audience. So... You know, we hope you enjoy our little look into this foray of third party. I'm Alex. I'm Boris. I'm Eric. And you're watching the, the A3, A3 review. review. You said it this I time. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here they all are. We got a whole bunch of uh, mini bots from uh, three different brands. That's right. Uh, Legend scale uh, brands. Um, uh, we're going to kind of uh, talk about three of the brands here okay. they're not all of them but uh, uh we just thought this was a great uh, conversation uh we want to start with uh the legend scale that uh, we all know that have been around for a while now and arguably probably the start of the legends yep. scale trend uh, iron factory uh they are uh the most consistent and they've definitely pumped out a lot of these guys uh you know over the years and then we have somewhat of a newcomer here uh new age or new age um and they are basically focusing on some g1 stuff uh and then another you know uh, fairly new uh, line as well the magic square line which a lot of people have been asking about as well uh and then a couple lines that we don't have here that uh, were prominent as well the warm pocket line uh, as well as the Palm Collection. Uh, I believe DX9 made the Warren Pocket and then Unique Toys did the uh, Palm Collection. They're kind of the same yeah. uh, company. Uh, we didn't want to bring them in here because A, we don't have a space. <laughs> and B, like they've def definitely kind of trickled off on that line. Uh, mm -hmm. And I feel like the Magic Square is a good replacement for those lines. But we'll talk about that in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, right off the bat, uh you know uh, i just wanted to kind of say that if for all of you who haven't been collecting any of the legend scale stuff and up until now the only maybe legend scale stuff that you guys might know about would be hasbro or takara's legend scale stuff uh this is not in any way the same <laughs> um you know legend scale for hasbro i've always loved I've always loved mini cons when yeah. I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. They're just great little fun little desktop toys. I remember as a kid, I would bring around Beachcomber. Oh, power, yeah. I had my Power Glide in my pocket all the time. Yeah. Uh, they're super fun. And, uh, you know, as time went by, I still always been charmed by all the small mini cons. And mm -hmm. there have been really great ones that Hasbro come up with. Uh, but I always felt like, you know, uh, they could have done a little bit more with them. Uh, so third party, of course, came out and have done that. So if you haven't checked it out, you know, and just kind of dismissed it as like small scale legends figures, the third party stuff is actually quite a bit more well engineered. Uh, and in, in my opinion, for most of it, uh, and then a lot more uh, articulation for yeah. the most part uh, uh, when it comes to certain figures. Uh, so, you know, you know, having said that, there's definitely so much here that we uh, probably can't focus in on any specific figures or have any comparisons between the Hasbro and this but I would say that if you are you know interested in it and you haven't really had a chance to play with it uh, there are definitely uh, some some things to check out uh, in terms of even if you want to purchase one iron factory just to kind of see what it's like I, I highly encourage it you're probably gonna uh, like it a lot um, but, uh, what we will go into is kind of like the difference between, uh, the new legends, third party figures mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, give our take on what kind of, uh, market and fandom that, uh, each line is trying to hit up since there is so much variety and choice now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, let's start with the old school guys, Dive right uh, into it. the iron factory. Um, I mean, Eric, here is uh, out of all of us have probably had like the most experience with iron factor i mean i have a pretty large collection myself because they have been around for this long and <clears throat> i really love them but maybe eric could speak towards the uh quality and just kind of like the style and what it kind of appeals to well, the fan fandom 
I, I think what Iron Factory has been around for about three, three to four years now. Oh, maybe three years, at least three years, right? I think three years might be, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might be longer. Might they be. they started three, off yeah. actually with um, an add-on kit. Yeah, the Grimlock add-on kit. That's right. They and didn't they didn't actually start out with the Legends. Yeah, so they started out with the Grimlock add-on kit, and then they made the I think it was the Metroplex add-on. That's uh, right. The the then, turret. Turret and, and manacle, the, and then they the went on to blaster and everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. And I think from from way back then, even their quality was really good, at least for the turret manacle, mm -hmm. uh, the blaster and was it uh, sound wave? You know, a little suspect on the on the idea mm -hmm. of uh, their tapes becoming a chair and stuff like that. But uh, I mean, since then they've grown exponentially. Uh, I think these guys have been really really nice. I think. Which one's their latest one is uh, the Mirage. Uh, uh, for the cars, yes. For the cars, Correct. yeah, right? So they've come up and beyond. They've got rubber tires and stuff like that. So it's a real nice throwback to the G1 stuff. I mean, the mini bots. Mm -hmm. Back then, yeah. you had some rubber tires on the uh, Bumblebee and the Cliff Jumper, uh, hubcap, stuff like that. I always love that. Like, I know they doesn't like rubber tires? I know they crack over time, but, you know, when you get them brand new... Like it was all about the tires. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh. They, they they had they used to say Dunlop on them. Isn't yes, right? they did. Correct. Yes, they did. And yeah. if for G one repurposing, if if you have some cracked tires, if you can find some old um, penny racers, mm -hmm. not pen erasers, but penny racers, those little uh, SD the Toro cars. Q. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can replace those tires because oh. they all have Dunlops on them. Oh, nice. So, but now, yeah. with the new ones, you can, uh, they don't have Dunlop on them, but you can still replace those tires with them. Wow. And they actually work really, really well. That's really cool. But uh, just that's uh, side. <clears throat> I thought that was just such a great little, like, detail. Those were great. I mean, those in. were fantastic. Yeah. I mean, obviously, when you compare the Iron Factory to the old mini bots, totally different. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, I think Iron Factory's done a good job of making these legend scale figures. Uh, to represent uh, our, I guess, modern view of Transformers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it, I'd say the styling is kind of aimed at more like the comic book and Absolutely. IDW style. I styling. think so, yeah. I mean, uh, even like Bruticus, the combined form of Bruticus, uh, it's a very modern take on things. It's mm -hmm. not your uh, Frankenstein look anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know, and even the engineering on that thing is fantastic. You, yeah. You, you've played with it. Nothing falls apart unless it's like the weapons or something like that. But aside from that, everything is fantastically put together. Yeah, That's one thing cool. I've really appreciated about Iron Factory is how consistent they have been. Not only in uh, their ability to release their products, but the yes. consistency in the actual product itself. Um, whether it comes to the packaging, mm -hmm. uh, the consistency in the plastic quality even like what you mentioned from uh, turret and manacle the plastic is very much the same and the same great quality plastic that you're used to they've definitely increased uh, their engineering capabilities as they've tackled different characters and, and different you know uh, like uh, ideas like combiners yeah yeah, I mean they. St I mean you're right. They still stay very consistent with their model. Mm -hmm. Everything is still relatively easy to transform. Uh, you know, there's some difficulties with some of the smaller stuff, like uh, let's say uh, Megatron or well, not Megatron's not small, but uh, the engineering is a little bit different since he's got like three different things. You know, you swap heads and this mm -hmm. and that, right? But uh, Tarn mm -hmm. was a little bit more. You know, engineering wise was a little bit different. Uh, but otherwise, it still has the same feel to it, the same funness to it, um, not overly complex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it isn't, and, and it's just a really, it's intuitive, I find. And it's just a really fun uh, thing to kind of play with, and they really bring, like, kind of a, a fun factor to collecting. And then, because the series is so consistent, it's so vast, it makes it a series worth actually collecting. Yeah. Uh, my only complaint would be that, you know, with Iron Factory, you kind of have to get them while they're available. Chances of a reissue on these guys are really slim sometimes. And if you can't get it again, they really, really rise in the aftermarket, I've noticed. Oh, like the... Uh, if the Tactical Squad, for example. It's insane. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> insane. Yeah. Uh, and I 
I I know the guys who actually sold it and got three hundred dollars or two hundred and something it's, odd dollars. It's 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 absolutely crazy. Uh, have they seen uh, re- reissues? Uh, some of this stuff hasn't. That's why I'm saying. Oh, okay. You know, with with the Iron Factory stuff, you can't really can't uh, miss a beat with it. Yeah. Um, if you are new to it and you're trying to go backwards, uh, does kind of suck, good but luck. yeah, <laughs> it's like, good luck. uh, but at the same time, you know, mm. like that's why I kind of like this line because they're consistent. They're coming out with new stuff all the time. Yeah. You can still get in now and still be able to collect a lot of cool figures. Uh, and then, you know, if you go to a lot of the conventions and whatnot, you can find, uh, used versions of this or whatever. Uh, sometimes you can find a pretty practical deal on uh, some of the ones that you're looking for um so that is you know one one critique i do have is that you don't see a lot of reissues unfortunately with Iron i kind of like that i yeah. kind of like it that you can't get those uh reissues only because yeah I, i'm looking at this as a monetary uh mm-hmm. thing yeah. but uh you know that's the whole point yeah of collecting yeah right because they appreciate in value yeah um and you might not be doing it to sell in the long run or whatever, but yeah. it's nice to know that something that you're investing in appreciates. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to, you know, it just keeps getting reissued and reissued yeah. and reissued. Yeah. Then it's just like everybody has the same damage. It's just, it's really just a peace of mind. Like it makes you feel good. Like, oh, something I have is now has so much value. Yeah. Right? So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, I mean, there's not much more I can say about Iron Factory. They're pretty much the standard, I feel, when it comes to Legends uh, scale line. Yeah, I find that um, like when we're talking about this, mm-hmm. like Iron Factory is the brand that comes to mind first. Like I don't think of any other brand. I mean, there are other brands, but this is the one that, that comes to my mind first besides Warren Pocket. Yeah. Just because that's, it has a catchy name. <laughs> that's right. So Warren Pocket, of course, I don't have here. Yeah. But what Warren Pocket tried to do was it was DX9's attempt to start hitting the G1 uh, uh, aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to really focus in on and uh, really give tribute to the G1 look um, from the cartoons. Uh, so Warren Pocket was great that way. Uh, Palm Collection tried to tackle the Headmasters, uh, which was also you know a big part of nostalgia. Um, and it's actually really kind of cool because their heads did... You transform like and stuff. Up, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean they weren't ultra detailed, but just to have that little gimmick, I felt like the Palm Collection stood out a little bit more than the Warren Pocket uh, Collection. Uh, not because you know we didn't want a G1 line or anything like that. I just felt like uh, the plastic and the quality and also the release schedule hurt the DX9 Warren Pocket a oh, little Warren bit. Warren Pocket was the Star Screams, the Jets. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did that first Tyrant as well. The oh, Megatron, right, 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 and they were all, and they also did the Hulky, which, which is uh, Hulk. was a Devastator, the oh, Combiner, yes. yeah. uh, and I mean, <laughs> it was... just, it just wasn't great, mm. right? Like when we got the Iron Factory Bruticus, it was expensive, but it was really great. Mm. Like there's so many points about it that even though they weren't trying to be true to any one look, they just they tried to kind of keep on the Cybertron comic book look uh, idw look uh it was the proportions everything about it the articulation uh hulky kind of fell short of that and then with the soft plastics that warren pocket had um and anyone that has held uh, you know a warren pocket piece they'll know what i mean uh, the the soft plastic it can be a turnoff it's definitely got a very different quality to it in terms of appearance it has kind of like a a more frosty matted look to it so you're not going to get any sheen on this thing which some people might like but when you're actually transforming it that plastic it, it kind of felt almost like a rubberized yeah right hard plastic yeah which you know i i don't know what it is but feeling that between uh the iron factory and the warm pocket plastic somehow iron factory felt like more of a solid and um higher quality plastic i and that probably isn't even the truth but it just feels that way and i know a lot of people have felt the same uh so i i wanted to segue to that because magic square is very much the same absolutely it's it's got all this kind of like um 
you, you know what I mean, Alex? You can yeah. tell like it's a yeah. softer kind of a plastic. You can, yeah, it's, it's very it's matte. malleable. Yeah. And then the matte finish on it, uh, the density is kind of a little bit different. Um, it's interesting, but I, I kind of, uh, when I look at the Magic Square, and I know that it's the same guys that did it again, right? DX9. DX9, Magic Square. Right? Magic Square. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they've improved on their Warren Pocket line. Like, this is definitely an improvement over the Warren Pocket line in terms of design. Okay. And even though it's that's kind of same plastic, it actually does feel a little bit uh, thicker now. Like, or there's some sort of a quality difference, even I think though the tightness, using... even. Uh, yeah. I mean, shoot, I should have brought some, we should have brought some uh, Warren Pocket stuff. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I never kept any. Yeah. <laughs> we, well, we're okay. pretty much sold out. Otherwise, I would have as well. Yeah. I, uh, but we, we also don't have a whole lot of space on here. I remember yeah. the, the Warren Pocket stuff. The, even the packaging was kind of different. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I found that that's probably what was my deterrent of collecting them. It was the, the boxes were weren't even as nice as let's say iron factory um and they have changed their boxes now right mm -hmm. so the boxes are a little bit more sturdy um and the figures yeah i've noticed that they are a little bit they're they're much better than the old stuff mm. right so and the they seem to capture um i guess the the uh, uniqueness or the figures mm. themselves they've captured them pretty nicely um although they still have their little little differences uh, in terms of scaling and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think if you're going for kind of like a, um, a G1 aesthetic, uh, they're very good. Like they definitely match and scale wise, they do scale really well next to the Iron Factory. I mean, they're, they're oh yeah, that's pretty good actually. They're pretty good sizing. Mm-hmm. They're not too far off at all. Yeah. yeah. It might be slightly off tiny bit, but it's not like yeah. noticeable. Yeah, exactly. So in terms of scale and everything, that's why the Magic Square line, I, I do like if you've already been collecting some Iron Factory and you also want to have like a G1 counterpart to it, uh, it makes for a great display. You have kind of like your IDW comic book inspired, your G1 inspired. Maybe you want a mix of both. Um, they scale really, really well together. And, you know, on the outset, when you look at them, the actual finish doesn't bother me as much as well. The Warren Pocket, I felt like you can definitely tell uh, the difference in the quality between that and the Iron Factory a lot just by look. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to really say about that line. The, the transformations have been pretty decent as well. Well, just a little bit of info. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was speaking to Iron Factory, they they're actually friends with DX9, mm. um, and he was, said he was actively trying not to uh, step on any toes. So they would try to they would they would talk right. Yeah. So uh, they would make things that the other person wasn't making. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's if, good. If you want uh, to collect everything, you you could because there's not a lot of overlap. Right. Mm. So. Um, if you think about it, you haven't seen a lot of these vehicles over here uh, with, uh, uh, you know. Uh, well, yeah, we haven't had an infernal grapple yeah. or a yeah. trail, trail breaker, or breaker like on the Iron Factory side. There, Even Beachcomber, uh, Huffer. The five mm -hmm. companies, there are, there have been like overlaps though, right? Like small one or, overlaps, a few, like, yeah, yeah, one yeah, or okay. two or stuff yeah. like that. There's obviously yeah. going to be somewhat offs, like the yeah. Jets, the Seekers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah There's yeah. obviously someone who's going to make it. Yeah. But if you if you notice, yeah. uh, it's like they still stick with a more G one yeah look, right? Yeah. Whereas the Iron Factory uh, Jets are significantly different. They're yeah, more yeah. up to date, yeah. like yeah. Raptors. It's stuff. like the same character, but like a different aesthetic to it, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. absolutely. Well, that's cool then. Yeah. I mean, Warren Pocket made the G1 jets. Yeah. Uh, they look great as jets. Uh, they're okay in bot mode. Um, but you could tell the aesthetic was very different. Yes, like it absolutely. Was, there was no yeah, mistaking yeah. who was who. Exactly. So, I mean, there's a spot for either in your collection if you're, you know, you're looking for a more kind of stylized look. Iron Factory definitely has uh, taken some liberties and... I kind of like that. That's that's one of the draws for me for the Iron Factory stuff. Well, I think what's really great is that, like like you mentioned before, like there's not. I mean, even though there is the, um, uh, you know, the different finish on it. I mean, the type of plastic, mm -hmm. it, the height 
is uh, the scale rather is uh, not that far off that you can mix and match like I could put some guys over here and some guys over here and then from the naked eye you could just look at it and feel like this is a complete collection like yeah. it doesn't matter which brand it is it just looks so complete yeah ex exactly yeah so you know I think it's great that they you know moved on to the magic square line yeah I, I think it is an improvement over the Warren pocket line um and I, I look forward to kind of seeing more come out of this line i really I, d I don't have it here but i really enjoyed the uh beachcomber and the sea spray two pack for yeah. example those were some really great highlights from that this line as well yeah um yeah but moving on then we have newage okay uh which is kind of like you know still trying to capture the g1 look but it's got more of a plastic feel that's kind of closer towards the Iron Factory, not exact. Mm -hmm. But it's got this closer to it. It's definitely got a different uh, finish to the plastic that makes it look really great. Um, uh, a lot of it does come in matte plastic, uh, but it's a matte plastic that has a different kind of finish than the matte plastic on the Iron Factory. Like it's a very smooth matte plastic on here. Uh, and one of the things that I actually mention is that for anyone that remembers that do you remember the wst line oh yeah the totally smallest yeah. line yeah mm -hmm. these plastics actually feel like the wst line oh okay um and it's it's really interesting because um these are actually smaller in scale than the rest of these uh and i wish i had the little bumblebee here i think we forgot it but he's really tiny <laughs> compared yeah. to everything else it's like this little mini b and it was one of their first actually it was their first figure came out and i i dismissed the line because i was like it's cool it's like a little mini b but it's a one-off for me mm -hmm. right uh i get it if i was a b fan or whatever but uh i don't see where the scale fits but then they came out with the rest of these guys and now they're gonna have the, the rest of the datsuns yep uh as well like uh blue streak um uh smoke screen it's kind of funny how they threw everything out all at once. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of like a, a, I've noticed that with uh, third party, it's usually one figure, mm -hmm. one quarter or two quarters, and then the next figure, and then the next figure. But uh, this this goes back to like when we were kids, or when I was a kid, you know, uh, back in the 80s, where you had uh, six figures come out all at once. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then that was your line. And then you'd have your second wave of another six figures and stuff like that. So it, it's nice to, <clears throat> to be able to do that with, uh, or New Age having done that, just so that, you know, you're not, you're not stuck waiting for, you know, one figure and then next six months later, you're the second figure yeah. being a repaint or something like that, right? Yeah, so great. they've done everything all at once. So you can actually, I would say you could actually appreciate your collection a little bit better by grabbing them all at once and then you have your nice line of figures, mm -hmm. Yeah. right? Agreed. And yeah, basically this is, you know, uh, really nice for that. Not only in that it, it releases that way, but uh, all of the figures are very consistent with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the transformations are actually uh, very cool, actually, on especially on the jazz. I really like the, the way that the jazz worked out. Is, um, is um, the jazz and this one and this one like same transformation? Yep, they oh, do okay. share the mold. They, they okay. triple dipped on that mold. Yeah. Just like the Datsuns, they're going to pretty much triple dip other than yeah. some tooling differences yeah. for smoke screen there's not a lot of uh, differences between mm -hmm. the datsuns either but it's one of those ones that you can forgive and have a triple dip because the they actually are very different in 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 terms of their look and appearance um uh, it, uh, the stepper looks phenomenal the the matte black and uh, uh gold finish looks yeah. really great then you got jazz i mean you gotta have jazz right mm -hmm. uh and then turning it into the slice cyclops the long shot is like you know um a really great kind of uh, uh offshoot uh, for those who you know do like this character um you know but as a whole being it it's smaller in scale it actually doesn't bother me too much it's actually kind of cool because it it really gives it this feel of the world's smallest yeah but it's you know of course larger the world's smallest was like they were pretty you remember small. those things yeah. they're pretty dinky yeah. right yeah they're but i mean this just has that feel to it. it's really tiny still and it's it's uh it has a certain quality to it because it's so small mm. um 
I'm actually super excited about this line because of that. And, you know, it may not scale well with the rest of it, but I feel like if you're able to get in now while it's early on this line, uh, it would be a great time to do it. You would have a very interesting collection. I, I definitely hope to see more from them. So far, we've only seen uh, Autobots. Yep. Right? So, yeah. you know, if they start coming out with some Decepticons as well, I think this is, uh, you know, a new line to actually really look out for. And, um, yeah. you know, I, if you're looking at scale, it is a bit smaller, but it's not like, you know, that much smaller, but it, it does make a little bit of a difference in terms of the feel of it. Well, I have to admit, like, I'm, I'm pretty opinionated when it comes to Iron Factory. I've always liked Iron Factory. I always thought they were, like, kind of the like gold standard. Um, but when I started to look at the New Age, like, when I first saw the Bumblebee, I was like, Bing, uh, whatever right? it, it, it was it was it was like a one-off you know you find yeah. those in your little candy boxes right these yeah. little gift yeah. right but uh when i started to see these guys i was like okay well hot damn right they're they're actually pretty nice yeah uh, and i'm a big fan of shockwave so when i saw that i was kind of you know i'll take a look at that uh the cosmos uh, yeah the feel of the cosmos was really nice mm -hmm. right and when when we transform it, you'll see how nice it is. It is a nice throwback to the, the G1 toy and stuff like that. So yeah. I think they really capture that G1 look. Uh, for those of you who just swear by G1 and only G1, I think this is a, a really nice, uh, I guess, stand-in for legend scale figures for G1 stuff, right? But uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what they, they bring out next. Um, you know, the Datsun brothers, I'm not, you know, Blue Streak. And stuff like that whatever i'm not too thrilled about that but uh, uh i've always been a decepticon so i'm kind of excited to see what kind of decepticons they might be bringing out uh to yeah. go with the line that yeah was... I, would, I would hope they try to tackle the seekers yeah again uh and then uh you know obviously uh megs and uh uh since they've already done the head sculpt mm -hmm. maybe they could do a proper shockwave as well um is there a sound wave out there nope uh, uh, yes. Uh, not for, not for new. Not not for, not for new. Okay. Yeah, but there is a um, which, which company did it? Uh, Hot Soldiers also is another notable Legends line. I didn't really uh, bring it up because they're they're a little bit inconsistent right now mm. uh, in that they don't have a lot of releases. They're kind of uh, far between the releases, and they've only really done uh, I guess the. Um, uh, the Was cliff jumper just... and the they started out well with the cliff jumper and the B, oh. and then yeah and uh, the sound wave sound was uh, their first one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the sound wave was actually quite phenomenal. That's why I wanted to see more come from uh, Hot Soldiers. And then they did a pretty good uh, prime recently, the Sky Pillar. Oh right, right. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. but I just wish they had released more so that we can see a little bit more and what this line is shaping up to be. Uh, the Hot Soldiers would probably be more in tune with uh, the scale of the um, Magic Square uh, in terms of a G1. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's yet to see some more come out of Hot Soldiers. I wasn't a big fan of their Bumblebee mold is why. The, the big backpack type uh, thing? No, they would actually had no back. Oh, right, You can right. see right through. It's really oh, hollow. Oh, weird. So, yeah, that's that's also why I say it's inconsistent because they started out with such an awesome piece with Soundwave and then the Bumblebee just kind of, like, fell a little bit flat for me and that whole cliff jumper set uh, fell a little bit flat for me. But, you know, it wasn't horrible. just wasn't super great. I think they redeemed themselves with Sky Pillar a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Sky Pillar definitely beats the Dutch out, in my opinion, uh, which was the Warren Pocket yes. Optimus Prime. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, having said that, likely when there is a little bit more for Hot Soldiers, we'll revisit and probably do a comparison between the Hot Soldiers and hopefully there'll be more coming out at that point for the New Age line as well. And we can kind of compare those lines. Um, but yeah, it, in, in general, I think this is a, a great start for anyone that's kind of trying to get into uh, G1 Legends. Uh, and being it's like slightly slightly smaller scale too, I guess if you have something like a Fort Max or a Metroplex to display oh, with yeah. it, yeah. Uh, I mean it's still not the right scale like in terms of Transformers. They should be really tiny, but you know we're not gonna get 
like super tiny yeah. WST articulated or really really large figures. Bases, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, it's these bases are getting really really big. Yeah, as yeah. Is, as yeah. As and as and honestly, as a display, it seems like a great idea when you have like the real scale. But we have a lot of these really mini kind of figures with this large scale Metroplex. You actually have to have a lot of these, you know, bots released in order for it to make a good display because otherwise it's going to be look really sparse mm. right so in theory it looks great if you actually could produce all the autobots and the decepticons in a like big scene with this huge you know like the uh hasbro metroplex or even the utopia from make toys or whatever it is right you know technically yeah it would like in theory, in my mind, it looks good, but you would need a lot. So it doesn't actually translate. Uh, and there's nothing that can actually be that tiny that is uh, worth having right now. Um, but in terms of a, a full display and what looks aesthetically good, even if it's not in scale, uh, these guys, even like the Iron Factor guys, they looked great with the Metroplex. Yeah. Um, and Trypticon display that we, we had at the store before. Uh, it's even though it's out of scale, it just makes sense to the eyes, I think. And that's why I think having New Age being just slightly smaller, it actually might go really well with the Metroplex. Yeah, uh, The Hasbro so. Metroplex or the Fort Max, like we have the Fort Max out yeah. here. Uh, you can see, it just fills it in a lot more. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have a million of these legend scales to make the scene look that great. So yeah. that's, you know, that's kind of my, my opinion on it. Yeah, I think it's great. I, I also think that it's great that, um, you know, if you're if you're starting out to collect New Age and you're missing certain characters or they haven't released certain characters that you want, you can still go back to the other brands and complete your collection that way just because they, you know, it's they're almost the same scale, a little bit off, but they still look good together regardless. <gasps> yep, they're a good start and Blaster is tired now. Blaster got blasted away. Yeah, he just wants to take a break. Isn't the New Age a little bit price point? Is a little bit uh, less expensive than Iron Factory? Uh, slightly less expensive mm -hmm. than Iron Factory. Slightly less expensive than the Magic Square stuff. Uh, I'd say the Magic Square stuff is on par with Iron Factory. Yeah. In terms of pricing. And then you're going to get usually like a 5 to $10 break on the, on the uh, New Age stuff, depending on which character it is. Yeah. I think um, if you're if you're just getting into the, the whole legend scale stuff, if you're tired of your you know, your little children yeah. bots type size, you know, uh <laughs> get it, size you bots. know, you can get the new age as a starter. Uh, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Just so that if you if you really don't you know, you're unsure about the legend scale, getting the new age might be a good precursor uh, or to start your yeah. collection, uh just to see how good it is. Uh, and then if you start to like the new age stuff, then maybe you can start to graduate your, your collection into going to either magic square or you can go into iron factory or, you know, hot soldiers or anything like that. Yeah, start right? mixing them in. But yeah. you know, the new age is because it, it's just lower price point. It's mm -hmm. a good starting point. Yeah. yeah. And, and by no means is the quality, you know, by any means less It's it's just a great price point for a great quality figure. Um, I know for a fact that they are extremely popular in Asia right now. Same with uh, Iron Factory, mm. uh, Magic Square, and Warren. I remember Warren Pocket doing decent out in Asia as well. Uh, one thing you got to realize about Asia is the real estate is. I mean, you're not getting big houses like you are in North America when you're out in Hong Kong or mm. a lot of the yeah. you know places out in, in Asia. You're getting really small spaces, so you know collecting smaller scale stuff is a means to have a nice vast collection yeah. without taking up a lot of space so it's very uh, popular out in asia not only for the fact that it's smaller scale but uh just done really really well uh so you know it's uh, it'll be interesting to see how everything does in north america but from what i understand iron factory uh has already you know made quite a big footprint in uh, north american uh, culture and collecting uh, and, you know, we're already used to legend scales here from Hasbro. So, you know, there's no reason why these can't be as more, as much fun. I was just going to say, well, look how many figures we actually have in this small space, yeah. right? So, I mean, try putting that with your, you know, your 
masterpieces and stuff like that. Not that I'm knocking masterpieces. Yeah. But you know, you can you, do you this. Can, with you cannot do this, right? Yeah. With yeah. masterpieces, everybody's you know museum pose, right? So, yeah. Yeah. You know, they're all kind of like Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, posing, right? But with with these guys, I don't know how many we got here. What thirty? Probably twenty five or something like that. Well, yeah. it's it's yeah. a decent amount for a small space, right? When when I look at this, I have this like um, uh, I, I, there's I just came up with this, but uh, the playset mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, you you want to do more things with it compared to if you had a masterpiece. Once again, not knocking masterpiece, but you just put your masterpiece there, whether it's a vehicle mode or robot mode, and then you're done. As for this. There's so much, there's actually playability, especially when you have a lot of them and you have a playset like a, a Fortress Maximus, right? So there's a lot of value there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's excellent. It's excellent for yeah. sure. I also think with kids, kids can actually handle this. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, with people being afraid of, oh, you know, uh, how many times have we gotten uh, people come up to the place, uh, to the store and say, well, this is my collection. And my son is getting this collection, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, well, here, you know, not that I'm not advocate, I'm advocating mm -hmm. playing with your kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So these things would actually do well. You can actually play with your kids with, yeah. you know, Iron Factory stuff because they're not going to, like, break. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's very hard for everything to snap off or and things like that. Mm -hmm. And even if it snaps off, you just pop it back in. Yeah, they're less fragile. Yeah definitely yeah. yeah and the transformation schemes not as difficult on yeah. a lot of them uh, to understand yeah uh, mind you hasbro legends really make it easy sometimes yeah, yeah i mean hasbro yeah. yeah um yeah i mean my kid figured out those i mean they're figuring out deluxes now so like yeah um but yeah there you have it uh you know so if you're kind of either new to the newer lines or new to legend scale in general uh, i hope this inspires you to maybe give uh, this scale a second look i know we've been masterpiece crazy for a while but uh <laughs> i for one i'm i'm a little bit burnt out on masterpiece right now yeah, that, that large it. scale yeah yeah you never got <laughs> i've never it. liked it at all uh you sold your masterpiece collection at a long one time point, ago. The yeah. Version one. Yeah, the version one. And then did you get back into? I this, got back into. The, it. Yeah, version. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it, um, all the 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 first like series of masterpieces, uh, and and then um, now I ended up with these. Mm -hmm. uh, but before I had the Takara ones, where Starscream was actually painted blue, right? You know which one I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, the 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 uh, realistic colors. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, like you. You know, we get burnt out by masterpiece, right? And then now we have something. I feel this is very fresh, mm -hmm. right? So it's something that it's easier to get into, and also has more. Uh, it's it expands to a wider demographic. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fun, and I I'm glad they've done a lot of them, and I hope to see a lot more come out of this scale of a figure. Yeah, and that's our episode for today. We hope you enjoyed it. That's right. Uh, stay tuned next time. We're going to look into more uh, little kind of play sets. Uh, you know, speaking of play sets. Yeah. Uh, we're going to look at the Diaclone uh, Battles, uh, the reboot. Oh, all right. Line. All right. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be interesting. V2. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've done actually, we've we've done this way back. We have done when it. When they first a, came out. A while out. back. Yeah, that's right. We uh, kind of compared the moon base with the regular version. Yeah, yeah. It just talked about how fun it was. Yeah. Well, that line is actually continued and it's grown. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like it's one of those lines that not a lot of people appreciate as much because a, it's actually really expensive stuff, and it's one of those things where you can't really tell what it is <laughs> from photos. Yeah. And even the box, there's no window boxing. It's nope. all package art. Um, but when you actually play with it, you look at all the components, how they work together. You start realizing that this is one of those lines that are really something and the sad part is you know they kind of go out of style or sorry no, go, sad. They go out of production yeah uh, and they don't come back a lot of yeah. them and so you lose the chance you lose the chance forever but we'll get into that next episode so stay tuned for our Dia battles version 2 episode next yeah so uh if you enjoyed this episode we hope you click that like button subscribe to our youtube channel we're also on twitter facebook and instagram at ages three and up and we'll see you next time see you next time
Oh. <laughs>